tick tock, man of the walk. Your silence breeds complacency. Tick tock, man of the walk. Hello everybody, this is Eric Jose on Making a Murderer on YouTube. I cover the Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey cases, but also as time passes I've been covering other cases such as The Staircase or OJ and many wrongful convictions of youth. Uh, I go over the documents, the photos, the videos, anything case related. So stay tuned, because I have many more videos just like the one you're about to see. Hello everybody, how you doing today? Today, you know, just wanted to do a little bit of a video. It's just kind of, eh, you know, nothing really truly groundbreaking, but wanted to kind of go over a few things that were occurring to me as I've been going through the motion for post-conviction relief here for you guys and when we're preparing these videos. Um, you know, we go over the, you know, you just, you go over a lot of the points that are there and it just reminds you of things anyway. So it got me thinking about these, this map those that, you know, you've seen me show it before that map of that shows like the dogs and all the, where the dogs were going and all that. And, and some of the things that Kratz said that, you know, that she points out that Zellner points out in her motion that are just so ridiculous. Uh, so I did this little video today to kind of talk about some of them to talk about, you know, some of the, you know also some of the points in the MPCR as we're calling it motion for post conviction relief just so those people you know hopefully as many people as possible understand we're going to be referring to it as MPCR uh, a lot eventually but you know so everybody understands what that means MPCR means motion for post conviction relief we're going to be talking about that a lot and you know as we're moving forward here i just figured that talking about a few of these things today would would give you guys an, a better understanding of some of the things that are going to get talked about in the upload we're doing tomorrow uh and possibly inform your questions for the live that we're going to be doing following that so you know it's i think it's always important to kind of understand the the ways that you can get into the Avery salvage yard to understand the way these dogs were going uh, for me, it's interesting how uninterested they were in the salvage yard itself, how they seem to be completely interested in the quarries, uh, the fact that there's the quarry pile with the hip bone that was still connected with like another bone, um, because there is an account from the defense's expert, Fairgreave, that generally you find bones like that at the original burn site, uh, but we didn't find any bones like that at Stevens, right? It's just all these very strange and odd things that about this case that that kind of the facts don't go along with what the state says. Um, but she doesn't just stop with 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 refuting what the state said at trial. She also goes into refuting many things that the defense attorney said. Um, that's why she's bringing claims of ineffective assistance of counsel, which is going to be the sec. It's going to be the 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 videos following. Our videos about the, the 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 cases for the state and for the defense, the videos following that are going to deal with the her claims of the ineffective assistance of counsel of Dean and Jerry. So these are this is where everything's headed. This is all the things that are in her motion, and we're going to go over these things kind of uh, line by line in a way. But we're going to be we're going to be picking out the bits that are important so that we can kind of hit them quickly so that you guys don't have to have that like I said that whole eyes rolling into the back of your head kind of feeling with all the legal and everything that gets thrown at you so we try to make them quick and and palatable and and in and and, and, and and with the help of julie easy to understand uh julie's doing fantastic work helping us create these slideshows for this um and you guys really seem to appreciate it so that's great we're gonna we're gonna continue to try and 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 make this especially this particular topic um that that easily digestible that that easy to look at that easy to understand that's what we're headed for so i, I hope i hope that our efforts are um appreciated i i've been seeing a lot on twitter and a lot on every you know the platforms that people really do appreciate it a lot of um really really nice comments coming in regarding um the the videos with the powerpoints and everything that that people feel like it's so easy to understand so that's great i'm i'm very happy about that and hope it Hope it, I just hope we can continue that and hopefully educate everybody about this 
uh, you know, upcoming motion from Zellner with the appeals court and what it's going to be about. And it's going to be about this motion that we're telling you about now. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get into the, to, to the map and we'll show you some of the things I want to show you and we'll come on back. All right. Hello everybody. We're here today talking a little bit about this, you know, the layout and, and, and some of the things claimed by the state that, well, are interesting. Uh, doing this video in, a, in some ways because of what I've been going through in Zellner's motion for the MPCR videos, as some of you who've been, you know, watching those, uh, you know what those are, and some of the claims that the state makes. So I just thought I'd put together a little video looking at all this once again. Now, for those of you who don't know, these yellow lines that you're all looking at all over the place, right? You know, all over here and everywhere, right? All these yellow lines. These are the tracks the dogs took, okay? It's an interesting thing, and I'm pointing this out at the beginning of the video because it's just interesting to me. The dogs get dropped here, and they seem to be just constantly going off of the property. Um, you know, they get dropped here or, or there, and then they come up here, they come across, They come. there seems to be a little T, there's something apparently of interest maybe here, um, but this is all on this road, right? And look at the path the dogs took. This is an interesting thing, right? Because we got the RAV4 right over here, right? So these, these dogs were taking a path of coming in here. And then they were coming this way over to where the RAV4 is. And like I said, they're not having any interest in the Avery salvage yard. Even though there was plates uh, found and, and cars and, and all whatever here, right? But they're not, they don't seem to have much interest in this here. They were coming in and basically getting to the RAV4, following the path that the RAV4 probably took to get in here. That's, I mean, and then there's one line that comes this way and goes over towards Avery's, but then comes over the berm here. I'm thinking this might be that path that Josh Redant talks about, that he was able to, that road he was able to take to come up right behind Avery's, because this is where Avery's trailer is, right here, on this corner. Um... Yeah, so I mean, this is what I think might be. So I think that's might be why this dog went on this track because there was a road there, and they they you know, if these bones you know remember there was bones, pelvic bones here, some bones down here. Now the pelvic bones were connected right here, right? If they got moved from these areas over here to Avery's, this might have been the road taken by somebody to get in here because the cops that were surveilling it were over on this side of Avery's trailer. And if somebody came up this way, they wouldn't have seen them. And it would have been easy to dump things in Stephen's fire pit. So that's one of the reasons why the the road that Josh Redant talks about taking that would bring him right up behind Avery's trailer, you, you know, regardless of the berm at the time. Now, now, at this time, I know because when I was there recently in Manitowoc and I was at the salvage yard and I was talking to Chuck, Chuck explained how he has now taken a bulldozer and he's built the berm up even higher than it was before and there is now no entrances uh, from the back way at all. The berm is now so high that it's there's just there's no way to come in in, in any way through the back areas now. So, uh, but at the time there was you can see this road comes right through here. You know you can obviously see and we know that from MAM two there was there was a uh, like a brown looking pinto that blocked the way and you could it, but and that you could get through there but there was a brown like pinto and that would block you uh, you know and then we had that brown mark on the broken blinker light on the RAV4 interesting but so I mean like I said it's interesting the dogs are really not very interested in Avery Avery salvage at all but very very interested in what's going on over in the quarry area so the other thing I want to bring up is, number one, yeah, obviously Kratz says there was no way to bring the RAV4. That's another thing that you're going to see that Zellner is putting in because she can easily prove it's not true. Uh, another thing that Kratz says, he says it in, in his, uh, um, when he's making his case for the state, that the RAV4 couldn't be seen on the uh, November 4th flyover because it was covered with branches and a hood. Right? Well, guess what? Guess how ridiculous that is. I mean, these are the things that the state says. That's ridiculous to say. If you, if, okay, guess what? If you can't see the RAV4 because there's a hood and branches, then you would see a hood and branches. 
I mean, it's stupid. It's stupid logic. It doesn't make any sense. So, yeah, to suggest that that the RAV4 doesn't appear in the November 4th flyover because there was a hood and some branches on it is absolutely stupid. Uh, you know, absolutely stupid. And you can see these dogs were running around in the quarry, running around over here, and we're only coming on and we're interested in the RAV4. Put it another way. They brought Brutus, the cadaver dog, right? This is where the crusher... Sorry. This is where the... Uh, sorry, hold on. Yeah, this is where the crusher would have been, right? The car crusher? Okay, this is where it would have been, right? When I was at the salvage yard, I, I have video of, of this, right? They brought Cadaver Dog Brutus here to the crusher. Cadaver Dog Brutus did not hit on the crusher. But what Cadaver Dog Brutus did do was immediately move this way, come over here, and hit on the RAV4. He basically, just like every other dog, they put the dog somewhere where they hope the dog's going to be interested, but the dog immediately walks away from that spot and goes to the RAV4. Or goes into the quarry, basically. You know, so it's... It's interesting to me, but that's, like I said, just another another dog's path that comes, that gets dropped off in one place where they're hoping will be something of interest, but then immediately walks to the RAV4 like you see a lot of these other lines coming at the RAV4, that these dogs were just coming towards the RAV4. Not really, as I said, interested in much in say, Avery Salvage Yard. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is the upcoming video from my good buddy Ripper on YouTube. He is going to be doing a demonstration of what the difference between a burn barrel fire and an open pit fire looks like, as you would have seen here at Avery's, from about this distance away over here at the deer camp, right? This is the Joshua Redan's deer camp. He says as he was driving up to it on the 31st, he saw a fire, but he says it was a burn barrel fire. And he knows it was a burn barrel fire because he knows the characteristics of a burn barrel fire and everything. So... Anyway, it's going to be interesting when my buddy my buddy Ripper does his video so that we all get to see what a what the difference between an open fire and a burn barrel fire is at 1,030 feet. Uh, because that is the calculated distance that we calculated from Stephen Avery's burn pit, which is right about here, to Joshua Verdant's deer camp, which is right here. So that's another interesting thing coming up, folks. So hopefully you're going to be looking forward to that as well. Um, but like I said, another thing um, in 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 that that you might see mentioned as we as we go through this MPCR is that Dr. Fairgreave, the anthropologist for the defense, says that usually the original burn site has bones that are still connected, and what he means by that is that there's still bones connected by some tissue or something because they've never been moved. That's the idea, right? Well, we did have that. We had that here with the hip bones. The hip bone was still connected to another bone by some little bit of tissue. And that's what we have here at this site where I'm circling right now. Uh, we don't have anything like that at Avery's. And usually, and he, he does make that point that usually at an original burn site, you do have that, that situation. So we don't have that in Avery's burn pit, but we do have that here where the pelvic bones were found. So that's another interesting fact. Another thing, and, and that's why as we're going to... As we're going through this MPCR and this motion for post-conviction relief, guys, um, is for you to understand why Zellner is going through this, the case for the state. What, why she's bringing up the points that were made by the case or that were made by the state. Why she's bringing up the points that were made by the defense. The reason why is is because she is going to be having, she is going to be disputing those points. She's going to be disproving those points. Um, or at least at the at the very least, she's going to be, um, you know, calling them into question at the very least. So that's that's why when we're moving forward here, it's it's going to be interesting. Uh, but it's like, you know, it's just like I said, there's so many interesting things about what's going on here. But we also have like Joshua Redant said he feels like when he was trying to tell the, the officers, the DOJ officers that were asking him about the fire when he said he was driving, as I said, down this road. He was driving down this road when he said he was driving to his deer camp and he could see off in the distance there Avery's fire or he saw a fire from a burn barrel. Now, the DOJ officers kept trying to tell him or trying to, he felt like he would, they were trying to, they kept asking him about the fire over and over again and was he sure about it and all these things and they wanted to make sure he wasn't lying or whatever and, and, and like all these weird things and he finally, he finally shuts them down saying like, you know, look, yeah, 
That's the way I remembered it. It's the way I told you. And, you know, he eventually shuts them down and they, they, they leave him alone. But he totally felt like they were pressuring him to say the fire was bigger than, and, and that all, you know, he felt this pressure to do this. And then you, so that's why his account of him saying that he really, because he knows what burn barrel fires look like saying that he thinks he saw a burn barrel fire from here is, is going to be interesting. So it's going to be interesting to see what my buddy Ripper comes up with so that we can see what the difference between those two types of fires will look like from the type of distance where Josh Verdant uh, was 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 supposedly to be or was basically approaching his deer camp and would have been observing the fire at Stephen Avery's. So, um, everybody remember, you know, I mean, this is just a few points I wanted to cover, but everybody remember when when we're going through the premiere um, about the case for the state and the case for the defense to remember your slide numbers of 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 what we're talking about you maybe even the paragraph number of what of, of what your question refers to because we leave the paragraph numbers in there as well um write down the slide number and the maybe the paragraph number uh for what your question pertains to so that you have your questions ready for the live so that when we go live everybody's ready with questions and 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 we can start answering people's questions about some of the more legal aspects of things hopefully with with travis there um, you know, that's one of the nice things from this channel. We got, you know, Travis here to help us all with the legal stuff. Uh, we have now had Julie Johnson come on recently and she's, she's absolutely doing stellar work on helping us create the slides for these, for these MP, these, mo these, um, videos about the motion for the MPCR, the motion for post-conviction relief. She's doing great job. She's making it, you know, very, very, you know, you know, stunning to look at, you know, the slides and, and makes all the information a lot more easily conveyable. And so she's doing a great job. So big hand for her. Just remember folks to, to remember how to remember to remember your slide number, remember what your, you know, what your question's referring to. So, so that when you're asking us in the live that, that we can more easily figure out what your question's about. So just remember the slide number, paragraph number, whatever, and then save your question for the live event, which should come after, to, basically it should be about an hour hour and a half after the uh premiere uh in which travis and i will go through the state the case for the state and the defense so anyways just wanted to point out some of these interesting things uh i really find that very interesting king kratz trying to say that the reason you can't see the the, the rav4 in the november 4th flyover is because it's covered with a hood and branches and stuff well guess what you'd see the hood and branches i mean I don't know, just so many things that the state says are just so beyond ridiculous. Um, trying to claim that you couldn't bring a car through here. It's just all these things, folks, all these things. So that's why I was here today. Just wanted to bring a few of these things up because I think it's going to help you guys understand a little bit of some of the some of the things that we're talking about tomorrow uh, when we're up when we upload the premiere for the like I said, the case for the state and the case for the defense. Um Remember the reason why she's the reason why she has to go through these things is because she's pointing out the points made by both sides that she intends to refute and 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 use to undermine the confidence in the verdict and therefore try to get Stephen a new trial or at least an evidentiary hearing. So that's where it's at. Um, trying to get you guys prepared for February first when she files her motion get you guys to a point where you're uh in a position to understand it and 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 know what it's about and what what the things that she's talking about and and you will you'll get that as we go through this motion and go through the in the motion in its entirety you guys will begin to get a clear picture of what all is being argued and what all is being talked about and therefore when you read her motion on february 1st you will not be completely lost you may be, uh, you may find yourself overwhelmed uh, by by the motion because there's just going to be a lot of stuff there, but you'll at least have the tools to be able to figure out what's there and and, and to understand it uh, better than you would have without these videos. I think so. That's where we're at for today, folks. All right, so just wanted to share some of those thoughts with you guys. Um, everybody, remember Ripper. Ripper on YouTube. He's going to be coming up with a very interesting video pretty soon. Uh, as soon as I get a solid date from him on that, uh, I will be letting you all know. But I'm very eager to see the difference between 
uh, these two fires from the distance of 1,030 feet. Uh, I think it's very, I think it's going to be very interesting. I can't wait to see it. So I keep talking about it. I hope you guys are all excited about it. I really, really want to see what these two, the difference between these two fires is going to look like. So, um, keep at it, Johnny, or keep at it, Ripper. Let's, let's see that video. I know we're some, many of us are eager to see it. So hope you guys, I hope you're setting it up now. Uh, you know, because man, we're ready to see. <laughs> Uh, Ripper has a lot a lot of property. He has the ability to do this um, because his property is so large he can actually go a thousand feet away from it and and you know set up a camera and then you know and and then do this. So um, it's diff <laughs> you know not always easy to be able to do that. So anyways, so it's gonna be interesting to see his video. Uh, obviously, you got the upcoming MPCR videos, the motion for post conviction relief videos coming for, with me and Travis. Um, the ones that may get into the DNA stuff, we may have uh, Scooby on board with us. So uh, look forward to those coming forward. Obviously, with this, this, these brilliant slideshows that are being created by Julie Johnson. Big hand for Julie Johnson because she's doing a great job. And um, that's about it for today. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe, and we'll see you. My name's Stacy Seabrook, and I approve Eric Jose on Making a Murderer to be able to use my songs on his channel. Thank you. So let's keep talking about Avery. Yeah, let's keep talking till he's set free. Oh, you just listen, I think you'll see oh, why it matters. Oh, really matters. Put aside the documentary, the state's version ludiocracy. All their claims so blatantly get taunted tatters I think that matters I bet you heard about hood lad sweat But maybe you ain't heard this yet Nineteen more times the DNA that was left anywhere Else that day, I think that matters. I really do, I think it matters. An ex boyfriend with a day planner page, and yet they did not investigate. And who knows why, and who can say why he was signed into the crime scene that day? I think that matters. I really do, I think it matters. How about the barrel that once was seized, but then returned to the Avery's? The bones were found. The next day, but not one photograph exists of where they lay. I think that matters. I really do. I think it matters. I could go on listing things off. Eighty more things. I, I just keep on singing these songs. Every freedom rings, I said it matters. It really, I know it matters. It could be you, I think it matters. It could be me, I know it matters. Work with Casey, it matters. I said it matters. It really matters. one
one's for you Just letting you know The world can see What they have put you through Not that we could ever fathom Or try to imagine The depth of your pain But the case was a sham The trial was a scam They have put you through 